Hello, I am Nagin Bezman, the author of Crusade and Shura and the granddaughter of Crusade. Hello, this is Pamira Bezman. I'm Nagin Bezman's daughter and I'm the great granddaughter of Crusade. We hope you enjoy our interview. Thank you. Well, the next question comes from an old friend, Henny. He wants you to please tell us what prompted you to write the story and how you did your research. Well, uh, I started uh, getting worried about that my family's story wouldn't be going on for my children, for my grandchildren. So I thought it would be nice since I was the last uh, bridge between my past and future at that time, uh, that would be nice to gather together all these stories, adventures of my grandparents, since which I, I have been listening since I was a little kid, and to make them in a little booklet and put in the library of the house. But my research, which took four years, and then uh, writing period just took me to another level. I was so much involved with my characters, with their time, uh, with their surroundings, uh, with the First World War, the Russian Revolution, uh, and all those historical details, uh, everything became just part of me and I became part of them. So when I started writing it, it just started the way it's actually in the book now. It start, started as a novel, not as a um, memoir written for a family. And I myself was astonished what was coming out of it. And I also felt great relief that it would mean much more than what I had planned before. And my grandmother was the first one, of course, the basic source of my material. And thanks to her, she even told me things that she would rather not to live in her life. She was so brave about it. And then I had another two years research uh, going through uh, hundreds of books, uh, archives, photos, cards. Then I was lucky to find Tina, Shura's uh, sister, in Istanbul. And seven months we were together collecting all her memoirs about what I was writing. And uh, I kept having people just coming into my life, you know, just by great chance. And uh, I was so much uh, into the story also while I was writing it, not only when I was researching it. So I'm so thankful to so many people who made this uh, saga possible for me to write. And the characters wanted to be written. People came out of the woodworks into yeah. your life. I remember you would be finding one person and then having another connection and then that person would have another connection and before you knew it the materials kept coming up and you were very diligent in in doing the research you you had books and books and yeah. <laughs> piles and piles of encyclopedias names of uh, family trees i remember it was an, a living breathing uh, process. Yeah, I actually feel like it's, it's not just a story. Uh, I feel connected to it. I feel connected to all the people I wrote about in this uh, saga. Not only my grandfather and grandmother, all the people who are connected to them. It's part of my life, part of my family, even the uh, villains. <laughs> and I almost feel like, uh, you know, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde's story, you know, how much the doctor is uh, in love with 
the monster he created because he created it. He, he can't just kill me <laughs> easily, you know. So even the villains can become a love affair for an author <laughs> because it's the author's energy and mind and fictitious um, adventure that puts that character into into perspective of the reader. Right. Um, on the other hand, as much as you were filling in the gaps with your own imagination and your creation, you were also very honest about representing the truth in mm -hmm. this in this series, right? I had to be. And this was something I had to decide right at the beginning. Because it's very easy to tell one's past, family past, uh, describing every character beautiful, honest, smooth, easygoing, uh, nice, kind, and then it becomes a children's story. It's not a true life story because we are all humans. We have our mischiefs, we have our ups and downs, we have our um, different characters and also different time period that our characters keep changing or putting out some new aspect to it. And I promised myself to be honest from the beginning to the end. Whatever my ancestors had done, they had their own reasons. And also the other characters in the book or in the story, in their life. Whatever they did, they had their own reasons. So I felt responsible for understanding them, each one of them. The bad, the good didn't matter. As a writer, I should be objective. And I should try to understand each one of them and look at the world, look at the life from their eyes, from, with their minds, with their eyes. And so that will be a warm, true story. Uh, Otherwise, except my grandparents, uh, everybody would be talking the same language. The dialogues would be the same, the motives would be the same, but then it's not a true life novel, it's a children's story. When my grandparents did something wrong or did something didn't suit so many others' uh, ethics, I had to write it down because it was them, it was their life and plus everything we do in life, every way, everything we say in life affects something else that comes later on. So if you skip some part out of the story, out of the character's life and then go on with the rest, then there is a huge gap leaving question marks because every step has a reason that carries the uh, luggage of the past you know <laughs> so i had to be honest yes word by word and uh, well as one of your uh readers <laughs> i must say that that really makes the book the books i should say because it gives depth to the characters, it grounds the storyline, and they are believable because they are real. Yeah. And it keeps you engaged because you want to know what else happened. It's not always predictable in the sense that it's all good or it's all bad or it's all pink and it's all <laughs> white. Uh, that That is just what pulls the reader right in and and I remember when I was reading the book the first time, I got so much into it that I couldn't put it down because when I put it down, it felt like my life was empty. I had to go back to the book where, where I felt like so much was happening and it was real. And it was real. Yeah. And reality, of course, the reality of each of us changes during the time period that we are in during uh, uh, what's happening around us, what's happening to us. I mean, you can take a, the same person 
in, in a peacetime, uh, he or she is different in his doings, in his decisions. If it's wartime, then you see that person changes. And if it's revolution, bloodshed, immigration, and uh, struggling to build a life from the very beginning in a foreign country brings different sides of your character out. So each person keeps changing from the beginning to the end of the novel because their lifestyle, their surroundings, uh, everything keeps changing. So if they want to survive, they keep changing too. Right. Well, thank you very much to Henny for this question. Thank you very much, Henny.